Hello everyone, this is Neronium. Welcome to a bonus part of Ratchet and Clank 2016. You might notice everything's in 60 frames per second. The reason for that is I've actually obtained a PS5 at this point, at the time of this recording, which this is kind of a while. And there is a 60 frames per second update patch that allows the game to be played in 60 frames per second on PlayStation 5. So I figured, why don't I play through the game again and get some trophies? But first things first, why don't we go through the extras for what we got for all the gold bolts? So we have image gallery, we have the cheats, and appearance settings. All of these are unlocked based on a certain number of gold bolts you have. For the last two cheats, which are infinite ammo and infinite um, health, you have to have 27 and 28 gold bolts, respectively. So, first things first, characters. We have the Blarg Scientist, who loves brains. You can do that. We have the Test Demi. The Extermabot. The Wargrok, otherwise known as a Blargian Snaggle Beast. The Shark Spawner. It's kind of an odd character. The Telepathopus. The Amoeboid. Pool shark? These aren't characters. I thought characters would mean story. Darter bat. Alien snapper. Alien spitter. Puffer fish. Toxic crab. Alien swarmer. Horned toad. Big Al, there we go, there's a character. Now where's Drek? Now where's Nefarious? Okay, we got Lumos, we have three left. Uh, Gadgetron Weapon Vendor, uh, Starlene. And the various types of head models for the other characters. Yeah. You're going to notice uh, this image gallery is not quite as extensive. So we got weapons. We got the Warbot Blaster, something we never get to use. The Trespasser. That's more of a gadget than a weapon. But all right, you do you. The Fusion Grenade. Always interesting to see. The Glove of Doom. Shame that they didn't get that beforehand. We got the Pixelizer. The hoverboard, that's again a gadget, not that. The, the Gadgetbots, they are literally have gadget in the name. That, that's an enemy. That's not a weapon. That, that, that's an enemy. That's that's not a weapon. That's another enemy. Where, where are my weapons? What, what, what's going on? These aren't weapons. These are, these are, these are enemies. That also spoils the final boss. These are weapons. These aren't weapons. These are these are enemies. They kind of bled through, it seems. Yeah, the image gallery in this game, not as cohesive as a crack in time or even into the nexuses. Or other things, yeah. So that's weapons. Okay, we got environments. So we've got the Galactic Ranger Fairground set pieces. Novalis. The Waterworks of Novalis. The Waterworks, again, of Novalis. McMark's Sport Shack. More the McMark's Sport Shack with a gold bolt. Rilgar, Blackwater City. Nebula G34. More Nebula G34. This is a Blarg ship. Star Watch Defense Cannon. Fort Chronotos. More Fort Chronotos. Batalia, which is now icy. Pokitaru. The Blarg Pumping Station. The Joai Resort. Kalibo 3. And the Deplanetizer. If 
final boss stage specifically. So, now on to Latch and Clank 2002. Okay. That's Chainblade. He's from Ratchet 2. That's the Guru. He's from Ratchet 2. Also got Big Al. Different designs for Big Al. That's the B2 Brawler. He's from Ratchet 2. Giant Clank in different Clank beta designs. Dollargratch, the Battalion General and the Deserter, and Battalion Soldiers. Ratchet Proto Designs. And finally, Original Artwork. Yeah, that wasn't really Ratchet and Clank 1, that was more Ratchet and Clank 2. So now let's go on to Screen Filters. Oh god, everything's more green. Yeah, I hate the screen filters. And you have to unlock a lot of them with the gold bolts. Okay, so appearance settings. Action Blaster, 1970s. Oh god, everything's got more bloom and white in it. But other than that, it's rather pretty much the same. Not too different. I figured that... Kerr one would be a good place to show off all these cheats. Bleached. Hey, look. It's a modern Naughty Dog game. In terms of coloring. But yeah, bleached kind of gives the exact opposite of what happens when you bleach something. Well, no, actually, when you bleach it, it washes out the color. Which I guess makes sense. Although I don't know why you'd want to play on this one. Because this game's very colorful. Alright. I'm going to keep doing that. Alright. Cross process. This is kind of like Action Blaster, only more... More popped out for secondary color? I guess? No, this is more... The greens are more pronounced. Alright. So now, let's not do cross-process. Oh, I think I was talking to somebody at the time. My bad. Alright, so let us go to Old Fashioned. Old Fashioned is just black and white monochrome. So, yeah, this this isn't the one that you would use if you're colorblind. There is actually, I believe, a colorblind-specific setting, which is going to be the next screen filter that we go into, which is, no, I think I, silver. I think this one's better for if you're colorblind. I, I could be wrong, though, but this one has more detail in it. And allows you to differentiate things a lot easier. And then the last one, Sepia. Which, random, okay. So that's all the screen filters. You unlock those a couple by beating the game, and then you unlock most of them through gold bolts yet again. So, let's get rid of... The screen filter and change the bolt style. We have metal currency next, but we need a place where there are bolts. So, why don't we head off towards Velden? Because Velden happens to be where the Insomniac Museum is that we're going to be going into in the next part. I should mention you can only access the Insomniac Museum in I'll challenge mode. Minutes. Otherwise than that, you do not get to access it in the default game, which is kind of dumb. You have to access it only in challenge mode. Which means you have to erase your main file save. Which is also dumb. But, we have the metal currency. So, out we come. 
and let us beat up some toads and get some metal currency. Which, this changes how they look. And as you can see, it's pennies, nickels, dimes, a whole shebang. So now, for the next one, we are going to put on adorable trousers. Which, this one's just kind of hard to tell. Don't exactly get how those are trousers. Those are more buttons. All right, so trousers. So that's another one. And now for my favorite of the bunch for the different bolt styles, the rare minerals. They look like rupees. I'll hit that. See? They look like rupees. They look like single rupees. And I believe they do change color based on how many you end up getting. So, let's break. Let's get to the last bolt style, which is going to be... The spherical spheres of doom and sadness and I, I don't get it. They look like the things from the Fable games when you level up your willpower. It's weird. They also make a weird flame noise. Mm, can't destroy these in Grim Garage. This is actually inside Grimm's garage is where the Insomniac Museum, right in front of his office, is where it would be. So, do that. And now, let us go into the next of the appearance settings, which are the head masks. First things first, change that back to default. We got Victor Von Ion's head. I believe they do blink and do m move their mouths, but I could be wrong. But I do know that most of them don't really appear in too many cutscenes. Pork bot. That, that's not quarktastic. That, that's creepy. Very creepy. Hey, me and Clank have a little matching antenna. All right. So now on to the next one. Which is the Blargian Snaggle Beast. Which I have electrodes in my head. Okie dokie. So now on to the next one, which is going to be a random T Rex. This one, I don't think the eyes move at all. Because it just has that deadpan stare. Like, it looks like the eyes are spread far apart in the opposite direction. We got Dr. Nefarious. We got Squishy Nefarious, who, as I've mentioned beforehand, did not die in the movie. In the movie, he gets turned into a robot in a post credit scene to try and hint at a second sequel. That's never going to happen. And then, finally, the last one is going to be uh, the Dan Johnson cameo. So we got the mighty Dan Johnson. May he forever be immortalized always in Ratchet and Clank. Still not as cool as the Ratchet and Clank um, a crack in time one where they, they just made a full on model of him. That was great. So that takes care of the appearance settings. So now we have Ranger paint armor. There aren't nearly as many as there were for the head. So we got Galactic Ranger, Burning Inferno. Which, yeah, it's pretty cool. I like it. It's not like too spectacular, but it's still pretty decent. Then we've got Chrome Tastic, which if you're wearing your full-on head mask, you will end up having a full chrome head. 
so there is that. This one's kind of, I guess, the equivalent to the Carbonox armor, since you don't really have armor in this game. This one's one of my, this one's my favorite of the colors, besides the normal default. And then we have Quark Green, which we even have Quark's symbol on our chest, which is actually pretty cool. So now the last one is going to be ship stuff. So everything else is going to be related to the ship, which there is the Galactic Ranger, the Hot Rod, which is basically burning Inferno armor, but for your ship. So yeah, that's that pretty okay. I don't like this one at all, really. I'm, I'm not a fan of this color scheme for the ship. I like the other two and then the default one. Although I don't like the symbol of Ratchet on the ship. I don't know. It's just a personal preference in my case. As you can see, it's all red and hot rod flames and everything. So now on to the next one, which is going to be anodized, which is chrome. And looks actually really cool. I actually really like this one. But it's not my favorite one. The next color scheme, which will be, I believe, Ninja Black, makes this ship look like the last ship you get in the original Ratchet and Clank, which is something I think is pretty cool. All right. So, let us get on towards the Ninja Black. And this looks cool. I like Ninja Black. Ninja Black is the best color scheme for the ship. So, all that's left to show off are the cheat codes, and then we'll be getting into trophies in the game. Split up in different ways, um, with trophies you can get on your first playthrough, and then trophies that you would get on a challenge mode playthrough, with some missable trophies scattered in between, and then finally the Platinum Trophy. I ended up playing through this game a total of three times because some of the missable trophies I didn't realize were missable. Anyway, one of the cheat codes, just like in Into the Nexus, is a slow-mo and then a uh, fast mode. So it's just like Into the Nexus in that regard. Uh, back on the trophy front, the trophies I ended up missing... The only one I can't show off is the safe cracker because... Uh, by the third playthrough, I was pretty much, I want to be done with the game. So I'm going to skip all of the trespasser terminals. And ignore that entirely so then I don't have to deal with it. And I kind of spe speed ran the game and beat it, the new game plus, in about 2 hours and 22 minutes. And that was just to get two trophies, which were, well, no, three trophies. Uh, two were missable, and one was a platinum trophy. So, why don't we get into that? I'm going to be using the PS5 functionality because I don't feel like wading through a bunch of footage to do that. And PS5 actually takes screenshots and video shots of different things. So, starting off first with... That sinking feeling, go to Iridia, find a Constructor Bot, and knock him into some quicksand, and you'll get that sinking feeling trophy. Can be earned on either playthrough of the game, be it challenge mode or normal. Next up, Kalebo Thunder. This is to beat the Kalebo Hoverboard Challenge Gold Cup in less than 2 minutes and 5 seconds. Easy one to get, you'll naturally get it. Super Trader, this is for getting every single one of the cards in the game. This one took me a while to get. Next up, this is a missable trophy. When sheep fly, you must turn a Blarg helicopter into a sheep. I get this on challenge mode, and this is missable. So keep that in mind. Next up is Mr. Fancy Pants. Get maximum health, which is 200 nanotech. You can do this on either playthrough of the game. Next up, this is a hidden one, Et to Copernicus. Go into the deplanetizer in a special marked off area and talk to this door 
After about 30 seconds, Cork will respawn and you'll get at two. So, Lazy Lombax, in Kalebo, what you must do is you must ride the conveyor belts, all four of them, without moving. And then, on the fourth one, you'll get that. Next one is on Core 2, Warbots into Plo Showers. Defeat 10 unresponsive robots, and you will get Warbots into Plo Showers. Clank Crusher, also on Core 2, you must crush five Gadgetbots with a hydraulic press. No, you're not, Clank. You crushed five of them to get that. Next up, I hate lamp. Go into Alero City on Kerwan. Destroy every lamp from the train station all the way back to the beginning. They do stay destroyed. You destroy the last one, you get I hate lamp. Next one is on Pokotaru. Pool sharks are the worst. Just go into the kill zone area. A shark will come, bite you, instantly kill you. You get pool sharks are the worst. Next up is Faster Than a Speeding Amoeboid. This one took me a little bit. Beat the gold Rilgar Blackwater City tr uh, race in less than 1 minute and 35 seconds. Took me a little bit to get this one. This one is missable. Not my job. You must have the Extermabots kill at least 35 Amoeboids. This took forever and took my third playthrough to get. Because I did not realize this was a missable trophy. Next up is maximizing potential only in challenge mode you must get one weapon to level 10 which is the omega variation of it only available in challenge mode next one is cha-ching you must get a multiplier of times 20 for bolts upon getting that you will earn the cha-ching trophy also available only in challenge mode next up we have these go to 11 upgrade every raritanium in the weapons for every weapon in the game this can only be done in challenge mode upon purchasing an omega weapon master of war get every weapon to level 10 the groovatron was the last one i needed so that gets you the master of war the next trophy is challenging this is by beating challenge mode upon completing it you will end up getting the challenging trophy and the final two trophies in the game the last two that i was missing the first one is death by disco you must make every enemy and i mean every enemy dance this is entirely missable this includes bosses and one time only enemies if you don't know it just throw a groovatron and the last one the hero of heroes so anyway guys i'm gonna end it off right here this has been neuronium and next time we'll be tackling the insomniac museum hey thanks for watching if you want to check out more Ratchet & Clank adventures on this channel, check out the top link for a playthrough of Ratchet & Clank Into the Nexus. And if you want to see a different type of Ratchet & Clank video on this channel, check out the bottom link for a review of Ratchet & Clank 1 for the PlayStation 2.